Wow. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let me fix my stuff here. <clears throat> Gotta always switch that up. <laughs> well, well, well. So, who do we have here? We have Mr. Fuzz99. And they have made a video that had caught my eye. And so, we're gonna go over a few of their videos. Why? Because we want to get a full, full take, a full, the fullness of their videos, okay? And then we'll get to the one that I have a problem with, okay? So this is Mr. Fun 99 so let's just go with, let's just start with something light. <laughs> Who's your favorite Pokemon? How difficult a question that is! Do any of y'all out there actually have a number one favorite Pokemon of all time? Cause I'm kinda jelly if you do! I literally love all Pokemon. say grappler but also i really like psyduck too and this specific pikachu holds a very special place in my heart also if we're talking just gen one i always pick squirtle as my starter and i love all of squirtle's evolutions i always also have a jolteon on the team and love jolteon i love how polyworld and polyrath and polywag all you can see this video later on you you can watch this video later on youtube these are all recorded have a Haunter or a Gengar on my team just because I love them and think they're sick as fuck ghost Pokemon. I think Ninetales is super pretty and reminds me of Naruto. Even though Cubone has a tragic AF backstory, I still think they're really cool looking. Ditto is just hilarious. I can barely freaking hear the person because the music is so loud, but hey, let's keep it moving. And honestly, so is Snorlax. And yeah, I literally love them all. Like, let's be honest. Even stupid magic card. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> went, went that nice and happy? <laughs> let's, let's see the next and one. exactly four hours! It's gonna be time for the Friday Fuzzball Party! So make sure you hit this little button right here to get notified when it starts. And make sure you freshen up on your fruit facts. Maybe rewatch those fruit videos I made last week. Cause you never know. What's coming, baby? Let's go! Free football party, y'all! Not too bad, huh? <laughs> Not too bad. Fruit, balls, <laughs> life is all good. But uh, I wanted to take a quick look at this video here. I can't tell people how to spend their money. They're the ones that work for it, so they can spend it any way they want. But the minute someone says that they support me and support the trans community, and then go and spend their money on Chick-fil-A and anything Harry Potter, <sighs> including the new Harry Potter game, and claiming that is their favorite game and the only video game they play all the time. Like, I'm sorry, you don't actually support me and my community. Because you are literally are handing over your money to these companies that are majorly funding all these anti-trans and LGBTQ bills that are hurting me and people in my community. Like you have no right to say that you support us if you can't listen to us and help fund these bills. Like, sorry, not sorry. You, you know, I always find that rather crazy because when we do the same thing with Bud Light, Target, Northwest, you know, what is it called? We even said the same thing about Chick-fil-A when they started doing the DEI thing. I, I didn't hear that same argument that, well, now wait a minute. I, I thought it was stupid that we would even boycott those people. I thought it was dumb that we would even be like, well, y'all are kind of going on with this thing. But now this person here is complaining because that somebody plays Harry Potter, a video game. And she's this, I don't know what this person is, but they are saying, what? I don't, don't even know this person's real name. <clears throat> We're just going to call you Foozy. Okay, so Fousey is saying here that, you know, you got to pretty much, <clears throat> if I go spend my money at Chick-fil-A right now, that means I am supporting a trans bill, a bill that is not against trans people. 
the bill is not specifically for trans people. I'm assuming they're talking about the bill that was talking about the thing in Tennessee for kids, right? <clears throat> once again, once again, trans people, or at least people like this trans individual, always want to have everything. They want to have it all. You know what I'm saying? They just... They cannot believe that people want to make their own decisions and live their own lives. If they buy a Chick-fil-A sandwich, it means they're supporting a bill that wants to destroy your community. You just give out this false narrative that's not even true. Because you it's like people want to create a problem. And this is the problem we kind of have with the boredom we have. You know, when things get all nice and easy, this is just how it goes. I think these people find a reason to be upset. It's like they grow up. You know, there's always those people, even no matter what generation, there's always that those group of people that no matter what was going on, if life was doing dandy, they will find a reason to feel oppressed, find a fi go find a battle that they feel needs to be had no matter what. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's going on and what's going on in the world around them. They are going to find something. If it's not being trans, it will be being black. If it's not about being black, it'll be red pill. If it's not about being red pill, it'll be about being a feminist. If it's not about being a feminist, they'll go after people who are short. If it's not about people being short, they'll go after people who have one leg, one leg that's too long and a leg that's too short. It's just they're going to go after anything they want because they want to feel so included. These people don't have anywhere to go because they want to create this sabotaging life of theirs. But let's keep it moving. You actively choose to not have our backs. And the fact you can't boycott and go without those things. And actively- The fact you can't boycott and go without those things. Letting these companies who'd rather us be dead use your- See what I'm saying? There's- <clears throat> Fousey wants us to believe that these bills want y'all dead. Does that, that sound just a tad bit ridiculous? Can we, can we take a step back? Like, that's the problem. Remember my last video, I was talking to kind of about this, that we can't even do some talking because the second that even y'all saw when the person interviewed those, uh, those drag queens that are against the Catholic religion, even when we try to have this conversation, it's like, well, you know, maybe, maybe we should not go after trans kids. Maybe we should just take a step back. No, you want us dead. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, why do we want you dead? We said, can you, can you not have surgery on the trans kids? Can we just take a step back? No, you want us dead, shot and killed and maimed and choked. Like, they can't even, they don't even have proof. Of, they'll, they'll take one random person on earth. There'll be that one guy on Twitter who's like, uh, I think trans people should be dead. And be like, they, see, see, that one person out of 313 million people in America, that person right there proves that all of them want us dead. When nobody is coming out in mass and say they want trans people dead, because I'm just going to be honest with you. If that was the truth and everybody in mass wanted the trans people dead, they'd be gone because there's the, y'all are such a small part of the population. Right. But nobody wants that. Why? Because y'all are human beings. We don't want people dying just because they truth, just because they're going through. In this case, I don't know. But in other cases, they're going through a mental illness. Why would we want somebody to die for that? That, but that also doesn't mean we have to play into your delusion. That's not fair either, right? I mean, we should be able to have a conversation. And if you choose to still live that way, cool. But just because we disagree doesn't mean we, mean we want you dead. That's just so silly. I'm sorry if you're making a comment. I, I try not to read the comments too fast because it'll get me off my train of thought. I do want to get to a point. So I apologize. Okay, so there was another video that they had. Here it is. One of the biggest misconceptions that y'all haters have is that so, they ain't got guts. Let's go back. One of Why is trans agenda focus on kid is sickening? Like, hold on, let's let Fousey speak for the entire trans community. Here we go. What is true? TikTok One of the it. biggest misconceptions that y'all haters have is that you actually haters. believe that we are trying to make kids trans or gay. When in how, reality, how is that being a hater? You see, people just use that word today, haters. There's people who are trolls. There's people like that. But to say people that are thinking about the kids first, they're haters. Even if you absolutely disagree, if you think that if we're thinking about the kids first, you think that we're haters. Because we're thinking, hey, you know what? Maybe we should just hold back on the trans. 
Um, maybe maybe not have surgery right now. Uh, maybe let the child become an adult first and make that decision. Because you know what? I'm not even going to lie. Blair White made a good point on this. The vast majority, and this is not coming from Blair, but there is a study that Blair had brought up, you know. <clears throat> Most of the kids that are tr- that are growing up and are confused about their sex or sexuality, the vast majority of them, 90% plus, end up not having problems with it by the time they're adult. So if there's a kid who says, I want to be a girl who happens to be a boy, normally they grow up and become a great functioning human man eventually. They, 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 they come out of it because the vast majority of don't, people don't deal with as far as transgender being that having that mental illness and as far as people being sexuality being gay lesbian a lot of people come out of that too but see the problem is is you're trying to keep kids from deciding for themselves and when they become an adult the parents have the right to teach them right let them choose once they're out of the house 18 you know once they're living their life doing what they have to do then if they want to be that there's nothing we can do you know what I'm saying? It's not like we're going to go out of our way, but it's like y'all are going out of y'all's way to make it seem as if <clears throat> if we don't, if I as an adult don't make the decision for them. And this is what really gets under my skin. And I'll admit to that. They say that if we don't tell them if they're a boy or a girl or a gay or lesbian, that the well, it's not even people saying gay or lesbian. It's really people just saying if we don't affirm their gender by the time they're 10 they're going to take their lives when every stat says that they're more likely to take their lives after they have the surgery you know after they have any kind of surgery because there's no going back you understand that but they just want to have this knowledge that oh man if i mean if we don't tell them that little johnny if we don't tell little johnny he's susan he's going to take his life at 13 no 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 that is not happening in mass obviously if it was we'd be seeing that number but they just want to believe it. They just want to believe it's true. And I have to say this again. It is just another way to get us to conform. There are no way around that. There's no way around them pretty much saying that you are going to do what we say. You're going to believe what we believe because we believe it. I don't care what your science says. I don't care. Um, I don't care what biology says. I don't care what, if, uh, is this actually going to hurt the children if they're going to make a mistake at 13 years old and ruin their life for the rest of their days, never be able to have children? We don't care what you say. You're going to listen to what we say because we said it. And that's just not going to fly no more. Let's continue. Reality. That we are just trying to protect the kids that are trans and or gay. Nobody wants to make anybody somebody they're not. Like, literally. Are you? Are you? you don't want to make somebody they're not? You don't know that. You don't know what they are. That's the point. They're kids still. And you're treating them as if they're full-blown adults. When a kid's seven years old, are we supposed to have... I'd say this again. For people who either don't have children or people who have not worked with children. Seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, even up to 15 and 16-year-olds, they will say some of the craziest things. Are we supposed to be as adults who have already been through childhood, who have already experienced life up into our 30s and 40s and 50s? Are we supposed to at 40 years old, at 30 years old, be like, you know what? This seven year old has way more experience in life, has way more logic, and is just the most, the most intellectual human being on the earth. Because the logic to that is to say that if kids can make that decision at that young, then that must mean that us adults, as we get older, must completely get stupider. Like the world runs on the children because if a child can make that decision at seven, but a person who's in their thirties can't even objectify, I mean, can't even be like, well, maybe we should just take a step back. They're saying, no, 30 year olds don't get it. 20 year olds don't get it. Adults don't get it. If they're saying adults don't get it, but kids do, we are screwed. Because that only shows that the older the kid gets, the more, the less logical they become. Does that make any sense to y'all? Doesn't it make sense that the older you get, the more logic you get, the more experience you get, the more your brain functions? Even biology would tell us that your brain grows after seven. You know, you don't stop at seven. But their logic, they want to say that pretty much the older you get, the less logic you have. It's just foolish. And that person out there with that truck. No one does not. We want these kids to be safe and to live their lives as who they are. We want them to be successful and to make it to adulthood. 
You want them to be successful and make it to adulthood. Why don't we let them get to adulthood and then they can do what they choose to do, right? And if that's the case, even then, you know, there is the argument for should we let people have these kind of surgeries? Just like if we were to say, should we ever allow somebody to say, hey, you know what? I want to chop off my arm, chop off my arm. Is that morally ethical? Is that, an, if that, is that just ethical, period? Or would we be right to tell somebody, yes, if you feel like you don't, you're not supposed to have an arm, let's chop it off. Isn't that a question we have to ask? Because I don't think that'd be ethical. If somebody said they they want to chop off their arm to be normal, we'd have to assume that there is some mental illness going on. Just like somebody says, you know what? I want to chop off my penis and I want to chop off my testicles. And I, I want to put a hole there that's going to have to be filled for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life, it's going to have to be well taken care of or that hole could possibly close. Or I could have an infection that could completely ruin my life forever and ever. I'm going to take that chance because I want to be something else. We wouldn't look at that same person and be like, well, don't you think that's a little far? You, you want to chop off that? And if that is the, the case, we need therapy because you're saying that you want to put a hole in your body that has to be maintained for the rest of your life. And it's only going to get harder as time goes on just because you have such a disdain for having a penis, right? Same logic going the other way. If you have such a disdain for having a vagina that you really want to close up a vital part of your body, skin graft your arm and create a penis out of that, that may, more will probably not work for you. We'll not be able to give you the same orgasms. We'll not be able to ha make you able to have children. You'll never really have that man private part. But you hate your vagina and your breast so bad, you want them removed. That is, you're trying to tell me that sounds even less hurtful than somebody who says they want to chop off their own arm because they don't believe they should have an arm because they hate their arm. We would question that. But we don't do any more talking. Well, we are doing talking. Once again, this is starting to turn around and flip on its head. People are starting to be like, well, let's have a conversation first. And that's because, thank goodness, as bad as it sounds, they started trying to go after the kids. And that snapped all of us into reality. To be like, hey, what a, hold on now. Hold, hold on now. And now we have to start thinking about even the adults and be like, hold, hold. now, you want to do what now? You want to completely take off a body part that will change your life forever and ever all the way down the road? forever and there is no going back once you do this it's gone it's just like somebody chopping off their arm you ain't getting an arm back you can get a prosthetic you can do all that extra stuff but your arm is still gone it ain't never gonna it don't grow back we are not we don't grow appendages back let's continue they ain't got guts and i mean that. things i, I wish really i really don't about know quick. why it keeps doing that one of the biggest misconceptions so uh, get back where it was Reality that we are just trying to protect the kids that have, are trans. I don't understand gay. TikTok nope. with talking like that. I don't understand the concept of when in reality, we're really just trying to say that we need children who want to really help us. Do you understand what we're trying to say? Because we love the kids. It's just, I've never made videos like that. And so, and I, I feel like people really think that makes their point when they're like, you know what's crazy? Some men don't really like women. <laughs> and honestly, they should pay the bill. I'm just making up something. But I see videos like that all the time from all these different kind of people. And it's just like, what is all this? Like, is uh, why do I need to be recording from right here? Like, hey guys, I just thought that y'all should know. That honestly, it just trips me out. <laughs> nobody wants to make anybody somebody they're not. Like literally, no one does that. How are people supposed to take you serious when you talk like that? You're not talking normal. Who is your audience? Are you talking to adults? Because if you're talking to adults who are trying to reason with you, that is not the way to talk to them. Like, who is your audience that you feel like you need to go? When honestly. Like, who talks like that in real life? Who gets in front of you and talks like that and cuts, makes cuts in the middle of their conversation? Like, if you really want to have a conversation like a normal person, it would be, I would, it would just be so much easier if you got in front of the camera and spoke like I speak or spoke like somebody else who gets in front of a camera. Like, normally, in the voice that you're using. Now, I don't know if that's your natural voice, but from what I can tell, 
it's a character voice. And so you're doing stuff like, well, if you really just look at it, we just really want to protect the children. It's like, what is all of that? I understand that it has to be an entertainment to whatever we do, because even I project my voice sometimes. And even so, I make jokes. But at the same time, I feel like I don't make my entire conversation like that. There's a point. There are breaks. It's just like watching a TV show. Yes, there are breaks and there's humor breaks in there. There is, well, I forgot what they call them, but if there's like a, a humor part of the show, right? Well, most of the story may be serious, but there's sometimes there's a little laughter, you know, just like when you watch it like Law and Order. Most of it's serious, but is there a couple giggles in there? Yes, but it doesn't need to be the whole show. You know, even comedy shows, they may be funny, but there's serious parts in there. And for the vast majority of it, yes, it's funny, but it is still like adults talking to each other. If be so annoying, if we were watching a comedy show, right? And the whole time, there's just this one character just, well, the way you look at it, you just have to. It's just like, man, that gets annoying really fast. And y'all seeing TV shows like that where the character is so obnoxious, you're like, okay, come on now. You see that? Every time I, 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 I re-click to press play, it does that. One of the biggest... We want these kids to be safe and to live their lives as who they are. We want them to be successful and to make it to adulthood. And we want them to have better lives than... Another thing is when you're making a, a, a video, you really need to learn to look at the camera. You're looking at yourself in the camera. This is their critique outside of this video. But when you're making a video, you need to learn to look at the camera. Because when you look down like this, it doesn't feel like you're making true eye contact. Because you see, I try my very best to look directly into the camera. I don't know. Now, when I watch my videos back, it seems I'm looking at the camera. But I don't do this. Because technically, my face is right here. So if I was to talk like this, hey, guys, um, what are you talking about? Like, honestly, it's just it looks so stupid instead of me looking at the camera. I'm not calling you stupid. I'm just letting you know it doesn't look as good. If you're gonna, if you're going into this content creation, anyway. We ever had? We want better for them. They deserve better, and they deserve love. So stop believing we're trying to brainwash all the children of the world. We are just looking out for our people. We love and support our people. They're children. You don't get to claim children. That's once again, the children aren't anything. They're not anything until they're adults. Okay. You talking about claiming arch, they're not yours. Just because you're trans doesn't make some kid who's struggling with being a boy or girl doesn't make them your kid or part of your community. These kids are not part of your community. The LGBT should be an adult group, not a child group. There shouldn't be LGBT for kids. There should be LGBT and that's it. Okay? Y'all y'all do your thing as human beings that are male, female, adults. No, you don't get to pick that because you choose because you saw a little Johnny playing in a pink dress that you now get to indoctrinate that kid and put that kid into, oh, he's obviously gay, so now he has to be a part of our LGBT. You don't get to say because little Johnny put on some high heels that maybe little Johnny wants to be a girl. And that's what's so crazy. It's what happens also with the young men. Okay, when a little boy puts on heels, it used to be sometimes where he might they might say he might be gay, but now as soon as little Johnny puts on high heels, and you hear this all the time, even Megan... Megan Fox said this. Megan Fox, who has three little girls who are actually biological boys, her argument was that when they were young, they put on dresses. So it's, when does that make you a girl? A boy who tries on a dress does not mean he wants to be a girl because the only way he can associate a dress being only for girls and the fact that he wants to be girls is if you were to tell him that if you wear a dress, it makes you a girl. If you were not to tell a young boy that if he puts on a dress, uh, it makes you a girl. The little boy just probably put on a dress because it just happens to be clothing. And they wouldn't think to themselves, oh, I obviously must be a girl because how would a child know that without being taught that first? That is not a natural inclination. It's not a natural, they see dress, they think girl. Because a dress can look completely different in another country, right? There are other p countries that wear similar clothing, male and female. The woman and man wear clothes that may look very similar, maybe long sheets because of where they live. Maybe they need to protect their legs from cuts and getting cut on trees because they may live in a jungle or stuff like that. They may wear longer clothing. And this, we know in other countries they wear kilts and stuff like that. But the only way, if you're a saying that something that happens to look like a skirt or a dress it's only because they want to be female. It kind of also destroys your own argument, Megan Fox. You saying that, saying that your kids want to be a girl because they put on a dress, meaning you are saying that being a woman equals putting on a dress instead of a dress 
doesn't mean woman. You have now put women into such a box, but you are the same person that says women can be so much more. Women can do this. Women can be that. But you're pretty much saying a dress equals woman. That makes no sense to me. A boy trying on a dress shouldn't mean he's a girl. It should be a boy trying on a dress. Should it not? What does this dress represent? You are the one who will fight so hard to say women can be whatever they want to, but then you put them in a little box because a little boy wanted to draw with a pink crayon. And you say, well, that must mean he's a girl. Why is pink meaning both? Why does pink mean girl? Why does dress equal woman? Why does high heels equal woman? Right? I'm not saying a little boy should go around wearing this kind of stuff, but what I am saying is you are the one who put on these labels and then put your kids into a box by making them boy or girl because of what you're doing. Support one another in the community. It's kind of what we do here. Who is we? Who, how old are you? You act like you've been in this game for 50 years. You're probably, what, 20-something? Probably just graduated high school a couple of years ago. I don't know. All right, let's try one more. What's gender euphoria? Well, I'm glad you have. Like, who is that for? What uh, what audience do you think that goes towards? Do you think that it's pointed more towards children, or do you think that's pointed more towards adults? Because anybody who would talk like that to other adults would seem what? What we what would we call them? We would call this person childish. We would say, wow, that very childlike. Let's try it again. Like if anybody came up to you as an adult and spoke like this, are you thinking, wow, this is a mature adult right here? What's gender euphoria? Well, I'm glad you have. You see? Like that sounds like somebody who's trying to talk to children. I think some of these people. I think some people know that their main audience is children because there's no other reason to speak like that. You know, my demographic here on YouTube is 25 to 34. So even when I get like entertaining, I never talk like a child. I never try to come across like, um, Hey YouTube, we're about to have a great day. Welcome to my channel. Let's talk about what I think is wrong. <laughs> with the trans community. Now, if everybody thinks that the trans community can be a little wacky sometimes, raise your hand. Yes, yes. So, it's just, you see what I'm saying? You see, you see that would sound like I'm talking to kids because it just, it's just ridiculous. I really wish I could bottle up gender euphoria and just give it to every person I know to experience. Why? Why would you do that? Because it is literally the most amazing thing on this planet. <laughs> Gender euphoria is like this state of bliss. It's just this happy, warm feeling you get. Are you the only person on earth that can... Let me see what this means. Well, you know what? I don't like listening to certain people explain stuff. Not even really a good day. Gender euphoria, a powerful feeling of happiness experienced as a result of moving away from one's birth assigned gender. So pretty much gender euphoria is a, a feeling of happiness that only happens when you move away from the gender you were assigned at birth. Okay. You want to you give that to everybody? How could you give that to everyone if the vast majority of people are fine in the body they're in? Maybe you might not like exactly how their body looks, but... Most people are, you know, they have, they have this thing, they have this thing called true acceptance. See, what you have done is not true acceptance. You have made something and changed completely who you are. And you say it's not a mental illness. So if it's not, then you haven't truly accepted yourself. You're to the point where you feel like you can be whatever you want, however you want. And if you feel like you can't do that, you can't truly accept yourself. And do you tell us people who aren't trans, you tell us that we don't know how to fully accept ourselves or accept you when you yourself don't know how to accept yourself. You were born a completely different gender, but you couldn't accept that. But I have to accept you now? No. Feels so good. Almost like the warm rays of sunshine. You see that how like goofy they explain this stuff. Tell me why my Why does that keep happening? Like, what gender you for? Whoever. 
You guys, I literally feel so gender euphoric today. Mm. It's about 65 degrees out where I am. I just what? pressed a button on my thing and it clicks down on the video. Wow. Let's get back to it. Almost like the warm rays of sunshine that like. It's hit. like a warm rays of sunshine? Your skin in the summertime? Part of like this rosy light you feel when you feel seen and loved for who you truly are. And people will experience this sensation of gender euphoria when our gender expressions match our gender identities. Gender euphoria can also manifest itself when a person accepts who they are in their identity in their mind and loves themselves. Or when others gender yourself? a person correctly. Or when others gender a person. See, once again, it's us having to confine into your delusion. You get val- I'm so glad you said that, Fousey. You just va gave- what would be the word? You gave validation to what we say about validation. You get euphoria from somebody calling you a he. <clears throat> right? You get euphoria from that. You get happiness. That is what it comes down to. It's all about validation. Not for all, but for the vast majority of them. Right? These people who, who sometimes, I don't know, but some of them aren't truly trans. They just want to have a validation if you will call me what you want to call me, or they have a traumatic background, one of the two, they, but they're going to give you one of the, well, you're going to call me he, you're going to call me she, you're going to call me Z, you're going to call me there, you're going to call me them, you're going to call me they. And when somebody actually calls them they, they get this strong validation. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're the only people who can say that kind of stuff. It, but I can't call myself an entrepreneur when I don't do anything entrepreneur. It's that almost that obviously there is, um, there is a uh, nuance. Okay. But at the exact same time, there, there are differences that, but there are similarities when somebody calls himself an entrepreneur on Instagram, right? It, they could do be doing nothing, but selling eyelashes. They could be doing nothing at all, but they sell t-shirts every now and then they call themselves an entrepreneur. The word is completely almost meaningless. Now I, you can't tell who really is an entrepreneur anymore because it used to mean somebody who would, start their own business even though they work their own hours their hours are insane they be making they be working 12 to 14 hours a day to try to get this business to work now with somebody who says they're an entrepreneur and they work two to three hours selling a couple boxes on amazon and they make a hundred thousand dollars a month when we all know that's not true or it could be an entrepreneur person who just owns a small business who has no customers right <laughs> i that's so crazy to talk about but it's true there are people who have owned businesses that have no customers and they don't actually sell anything, but they call themselves a business. They don't actually do anything. It's the same thing with this. They, these people get validation when they hear somebody call them she, even though they may be a biological male. They get this sense of happiness because I am whatever I say I am. And I believe, I mean, this may not be completely together, but I believe some of this has to do with the whole manifestation thing. I think when people took something like speak it into existence, which used to mean speaking into existence means you put in the hard work. If you say you're going to be now, it used to be also that it, it didn't always have to work out. You could be like, you know what? I'm going to the NBA, but you're also six, seven. You also, you know, go to a great high. school. you also put in the work. You also, you know, do your homework and then you're doing basketball practice. You wake up basketball practice. You go to sleep. You go to after lunch. You're still working on your free throws. You're still working on this move. You're trying to get everything right so you can make it to the NBA. But now it seems like when people talk about manifestation, and this is just an example, somebody says who they're, they're, like, they're 5'3", and they're like, oh, I'm going to make it to the NBA. I'm going to be the best basketball player ever. And see, You see, people take all logic and sense out of it. They just say, believe it. They're like, I'm going to be a millionaire. Okay, how? Because I believe it. That doesn't make sense. It used to be, I'm going to be a millionaire and I'm going to start here. I'm going to go to college and I'm going to get this degree and I'm going to start working myself up into engineering and then I'm just going to keep working my way from there. But even then they take small steps. The first step is to even graduate college. People don't even want to do that. I'm not saying college is the end all be all, but I'm just giving examples. People don't even want to do that. They want to get out of high school and then immediately become a millionaire at 25. Everybody wants to be XQC. If y'all remember that from my other video. Everybody wants to get a $100 million contract for two years, but they just want to wake up, turn on the Twitter, I mean, turn on their Twitch or turn on their kick and be famous. It doesn't work that way. But they get validation anytime somebody goes, you know what? You will be a millionaire. You will be successful. You will this. You are a guy because you said you were. Calls them by their preferred name and you just 
Call them by their preferred name. Now, obviously, you say preferred name, that could just be a nickname. Anybody can be called by a nickname. The correct or pronouns. Or use the correct pronouns, right? For them. For me, I really love being masculine. And during the summer, when I get to show off my body hair, like wearing shorts and letting my leg hairs breathe, or wearing a muscle shirt and just feeling super mask and tough, and I get... And I'm glad you said that. That is... She said feeling mask and tough. So she equates being a man with being masculine and tough. Why do you think that is? We're not even going to dive into that. You just let me know. Why do you think that this individual wants to be seen as masculine and tough? How many men do you even hear say that these days? Well, my whole point was to go out there and I wanted to look masculine and tough. Who are the only people you ever hear talk like that? Something to think about. To look at my armpit hair. Like, that's when I experience gender euphoria. I just feel so good about who I am. And the fact that I get to just be me. It's, it's just out of You're this world. It's just out of this world feeling. And you could be masculine and tough without having to be a guy. Right? If that's truly what you seek. But like I said, there's only certain people who seek to be masculine and use that word tough. All right, we'll leave that alone. Okay. I'm not gonna read the comments too much because some people are just gonna talk about weight. I had a really bad reaction. And I got no problem with people talking about weight. I mean, people talk about my weight, but in this case, that's not what we're here for. We're not here to call this person out for being fat. Then we're calling this person out here for doing some things that are not good. All right, let's read. Watch one more. The best thing about not being cis. The best thing about being not cis and meeting someone new is the fact they don't know your dead name. They don't know what you used to look like. Hell, they'll always use your right pronouns. Like, they'll only see you for you. And I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> the best thing about being not cis and meeting someone new is the fact they... That the, the fact that they don't know... And you don't tell them. I don't understand that everybody has the right to know your background. But don't you think that's just weird for you to be like, I'm so glad people don't know anything about me at all. And they call me he instead of she because they don't know me at all. Are you ever going to tell them? Or you, you see, you want people to live in your delusion. You are not the main character. I'm sorry to let you know that. I know it's tough. But at the end of the day, it really sounds like you want people to be the NPC. You want people to be just this side just like side quest in your life you get to do what you want and then we all just conform to it just like you were talking about earlier with the kids it's just not how life listen it, i want to make sure this comes out clear i don't i'm not i don't hate transgender people okay obviously i'm not against trans people trans people who have real the real mental illness i'm against people like this if pop if this person does not have a mental illness which they have not mentioned people who just say they want to be what they are and then they choose to be it and then they come down on anybody who disagrees i'm against that i'm always going to be against that because it's not true acceptance it's all a lie to me you know it's not truthful if you're struggling with this kind of stuff that's fine but to straight up lie to us and be like this is what full acceptance looks like and the only way you can fully accept yourself is if you change who you are in some degree or some manner it's pretty much what it comes off as and it, 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 it can only apply to you picking whatever random gender you want to be. Because if you let's say you're black, you can't be white unless you really go do something drastic to your skin to be perceived as such. You know what I'm saying? If I just say I'm white, it's not going to work. A white person saying they're black doesn't work. A Mexican person, may, maybe some of them can look somewhat Asian. It, maybe some people can pass here and there just like these people can. They can pass here and there. But it, nobody else gets to do that. We all eventually have to accept that you are. I don't get to call myself tall. I'm always going to be short. It is what it is. That's coming to fully accept myself. Now, the things I can change, like my weight, keeping my uh, grooming myself, staying in shape, that kind of stuff matters. And that's the stuff I've been working on here lately. And I'm not even going to lie to y'all before I end this video. I used to be like this person, not necessarily with the trans thing, but I used to be like, you know what? I'm just fat and this is how I'll always be. Even though I used to work so hard, I've been working out almost my entire life. But I've never been good at controlling my diet because I've had things that I didn't deal with when I was younger. I used to use food as an addiction because I didn't use drugs and I didn't drink. So I used food for the vast majority of my life as a drug. It was a drug to me. When I was sad, I ate a certain food. When I was upset, I would eat pizza, right? I would drink soda. I would go on these big binges. I remember one time I went to four or five fast food restaurants in a span of an hour just eating my stuff. 
it's just that kind of stuff. I never learned to accept the problem that I have in my life. All I wanted people was to do was to confirm and be like, uh, you know, your life is hard. And though I didn't want to be fat, I wanted people to validate the fact that I was fat. Let me explain. I wanted people to say, well, the reason you're fat, that's a legitimate excuse. I wanted people to tell me that instead of dealing with it and having people tell me, okay, we understand you had a hard life because you had this and that and this and that. But now you're older. You need to learn to accept what has happened to you. Go get therapy. Go get some counseling and get your life together. You cannot live this way because if you choose to keep lying to yourself, you're just going to put yourself in an early grave. And in this case, for this individual, they want us to validate them and not tell them to go to therapy, not tell them to get help, not tell them to go to counseling. We'd rather tell them to live their life this way. And then a lot of these people who are like this, who end up saying they want to be boy or girl, they end up more depressed than ever when they finally do become that. Because you know what ends up happening when you finally do get this confirmation and people are start calling you a guy or they start calling you a woman. When they start doing that, you realize that that stuff really doesn't fulfill you at the end of the day. Eventually, you have to go home and look at yourself in the mirror. And the only time you actually seem happy is when you pick up a camera and post your stuff on TikTok. Or you post yourself on YouTube or post it on Instagram. It's the same thing we see with people on Instagram. They only show the highlights. That's what we see with these people. And then next thing you know, five years from now, you'll see this person crying on camera telling you it was all a facade. That's the one thing that I do hate about social media. And it's not social media's fault but it's made people become less of themselves. When people used to have to actually look people in the face and tell people they're fine, even if they lied, it still had to happen. You still have to keep looking people in the eye every day and say, I'm not, a, I'm fine, I'm fine. But when you can get on camera and shy yourself away from the whole world and get on camera with people who don't know you, because that's also a big difference. When you have to keep looking somebody in the eye who knows you and sees you every day and is around you very often, you can't keep lying. It, eventually that eventually that glass that you are using to protect yourself is going to start cracking and people are going to see it and they're going to be like, what's going on? But when you do this with people who are strangers, they don't really know that you're not doing fine until you come out and tell them you're not doing fine. Or you start going off the rails so bad that people can't help but notice. I disagree with this person, obviously, and I gave a lot of different points, but y'all see my point. My whole main point of this video was to show Keep the kids out of it because I don't even believe the adults know what they're talking about when it comes to this trans stuff. But if a kid decides they want to do this when they get older, okay. But at the same time, we need to have some conversations because if not, you get grown adults like this talking to kids in a kiddish voice, in a kiddish way to make a point that they're trying to make to what adults. It just shows the breakdown in what happens. And the last thing I want to say when I mentioned this before we are now living in a place, and even I can admit that this almost kind of happened to me. We don't go from being in high school to being adults anymore. We stay kids as long as possible. You see people who are 35 to 38 still talking like they're children. In the dating scene, in the adult scene, in the life scene, people don't even get jobs. They don't want to do this. They don't want to do that. They just want to sit at home and just have the world just come to them. And you see, you see it. People like me, we, you see how fat and how fat we got in America because we want it all. We want to be able to eat how we want. And there's the let the let the the muscles or let the, the lean body come to us. And the second it does it, we blame society and say, well, how come Becky can still eat as much as she wants? But even though she's even though she eats more than me, no, Becky doesn't eat more than you. I'm sorry. You actually eat more than Becky. You just don't realize it because you deluded yourself. Same thing we're seeing now when people don't want to get a real job. People want to get a real job. They want to try to make it on YouTube. Not to say nobody does, but just like anywhere else in the world, YouTube is just like any other job you go to that's like corporate. There's going to be people at the top, of course, but the vast majority of people are not at the top. It just is the way it is. Go look at the statistics. Go look at how many people actually make enough money to get by on YouTube. Go look at how many people make enough money to get by on Twitch. It's such a small percentage. If that happens everywhere. No matter where you work, if you work at McDonald's, not everybody's going to be the manager. Not everybody's going to be the regional manager. And dang sure ain't everybody going to be the owner. Okay, there's just so much that you can do. But if you can live with that, 
and either say, hey, I'm going to grind myself to manage it or be OK with what you're doing in life. You work your nine to five at McDonald's, but you also get back to the community in different ways and you live your life, maybe just volunteering the rest of your life and helping where you can, because not all of us are going to be managers and owners and regional managers. Then you can find true acceptance and find your calling and whatever that is. But everybody wanting to be one thing is just crazy. It will never work that way. I just wanted to end with that random thought because I always like to give y'all something, something not only for you, but for myself. Remember, mo a lot of my videos that I make are not just for you. I got to speak to myself because I am not in the best part of my life yet either. We're all learning together. Love y'all.